Welcome everybody to lecture number 10 of electromagnetic field or electrostatic field. Today we're going to talk about the solution for a new kind of electrostatic problems which is called boundary value problems. So far we had talked about like four different methods to solve electrostatic problem like by direct integration of continuously distributed charges or summation of discrete charges uh, from the electric field or similarly integration or summation of the electric potential because of discrete uh, charges or continuous charges followed by the gradient of the potential function to find E or if we have symmetry we use Gauss's law another method is analytically if we have the charge distribution to use Poisson's equation and Laplacian uh, equation this is beside the uh, method of image to solve another type of problems today we're going to solve like a problem of a different type so the other type that we are solving today is where we have a set of boundary conditions and need to find E and V. The method that we are using is the boundary value and this like category of problems is called boundary value uh, problems where we like utilize Laplacian equation uh, to solve this problem in a specific like manner or like in a special manner that is suitable for this kind of problems so like solving uh, the boundary value problems we are using laplace equation where is we have like no charge distribution the solution depends on what we call separation of uh, variable if we have like certain volume with boundary conditions in this kind of problems we gonna assume that we can separate the variables the dependency on x y z to have the function in this format a multiplication of three single value single parameter or single um, single parameter functions multiplied by each other of course as shown in the uh, beginning we're gonna like handle or we're gonna discuss and see some examples about the Cartesian coordinate uh, system solutions for cylindrical co uh, coordinates or spherical coordinates this is like just a reading or for for your information you can like check this on uh, the textbook so the idea here We are solving and yani this method doesn't solve all possible problems but it is a method to solve a family of problems so similar to the method of image it can solve like certain type of uh, problems similarly here and this kind of problems we're gonna see like examples for them and as I said depending on the uh, method of separation of variables where we have like a single variable functions multiplied by a single variable function multiplied by a third uh, a single uh, variable functions for x y z and this is like this derivation and discussion is uh, especially for the Cartesian coordinate system so the solution of uh, Laplacian equation is that the daily square of potential function equals zero because we have no charge distribution in this kind of problems and we're gonna as we said the, the v the potential function will be considered or assumed or dealt with as like using the separation of variables where we have a function of x multiplied by a function of y multiplied by a function of z and just substituting the definition for the daily square in uh, Cartesian coordinate system the Laplacian equation will take this form 
and it can be like rewritten taking this form and we know that we are driving like we are derivating here we are differentiating here with respect to x so y of y z of z are constants so we are taking them outside so as we know that this is a function of y this is a function of z no dependency on x so we can take these two functions to the outside of the differentiation and now it's not a partial differential operator it can be just like a differential operator because the function is depending on x only and we are derivative or derivating or making differentiation with respect to x similarly for y and z and now the Laplacian equation takes this format now we're going to divide both sides by the function v which equal x capital y capital z capital so here it would be 1 over x capital the differentiation of x with respect to x two times and similarly for y similarly for z so this function here or this part here this term is depending only on x this is depending only on y this is depending only on z and the sum of the three terms equals zero so the only solution for such an equation is that this term must equal constant and this term must equal constant and that term must equal constant if any of those terms can be a function of x so it can vary so if we just take a constant y and constant z and changing x we'll find that we can't keep it equal zero so this will not be a solution so if we have like those like independent terms summed up to give us a constant so each term must be a constant this is the only solution for uh, this uh, kind of equation so let us take like this term here so this term here as we said it must equal a constant so we just gonna set this constant as minus kx square the negative sign is arbitrary you can do the same derivation if this is plus x the square is also like an arbitrary it just i think the people who make this derivation like assumed certain constant and after they finished the derivation they found that the outcome is sort of like complex and they come back and restart their derivation with this assumption this is my guess but if you do like to use just kx or kx square or minus kx square you will have the same solution with different uh, level of difficulty i think choosing this format is the easiest as we're gonna see okay so this term here equal minus x square so the equation here will take this form and if we just substitute kx square here minus kx square here minus ky square here minus kz square here we'll get to the second equation so we have or the fourth equation so we have four equations equation for x with this format a similar one for y a similar one for z and the fourth equation is the sum of the three constant squares equal zero okay so now we need to solve those sort of like four equations and the solution for each of the first three equations is independent of the others so looking here if we can solve this for x it would be the same methodology for y and z okay so let us look into this equation from the calculus we can like assure that this equation can have like three possible solutions depending on the value of k so if kx equals zero which means the equations that we're solving here second derivative of function x capital of x small equals zero so let me do this Okay, so just I brought this 
equation here. So we have like three possible solutions for this differential equation depending on the value of kx squared. So if kx squared equals zero, which means kx equals zero, the solution here would be just a constant multiplied by x plus another constant. If kx squared is positive, so kx is positive, the solution would take this form or this form. If kx squared is negative, kx will be imaginary and the solution would be one of those two forms. So in this kind of equations, the solution is a linear combination of all possible solutions and multiplied each of them multiplied by constant. So if this is a solution, so it would be like the total or final solution is a linear combination of weighted solutions. So here, if k is positive, k squared is positive, the solution must be like an exponential of uh, imaginary power with positive or negative and in this case we can just substitute this as a sine and cosine and this as a sine and cosine so we can also like use this form or that form so it depends in, it depends like which one is easier for you you can use this format or that format they are equivalent similarly here the solution is real like a, a an exponential like e to a power of real positive or negative and the total solution is a linear combination of the two possible solutions here. It depends on the value of kx squared. So here just to remind you what is the expansion from e to the j kx into sine and cosine or cosine expressed as e to the j kx e to the minus j kx and sine similarly the hyperbolic cosine hyperbolic uh, sine we call it sine hyperbolic or sine h uh, cosine h or cosine shine so many different people use different uh, pronunciation for this uh, hyperbolic uh, sine and cosine function and this is like the relationship between uh, sine of an imaginary uh, variable and the sine h of like a real uh, variable. So this is cosine, regular cosine, this is cosine h. And this is imaginary uh, parameter and this is real parameter. So now the solution for any case of kx square or like ky square or cos square the solution must be from this table okay and just because we don't deal with the hyperbolic function frequently this is the drawing for of course we know the exponential e to the minus kx the exponential e to the uh, plus kx the cosine h function and the sine h function this is how they look like so in all cases, the solution, depending on the values for kx squared, ky squared, kz squared, must be a combination of uh, those uh, three possible cases, as we're going to see from the example. So let's apply this uh, boundary value problem on this example here. It is given to us that two grounded semi-infinite semi-infinite means it is extended in like half uh, plane so it is ex extended in the positive x direction not the negative extended in the z direction so it, it's called like a, a semi-infinite plane the two semi-infinite planes are parallel as shown here in the figure separated by uh, distance b and a third perpendicular and insulated from them so they are not touching uh, 
is maintained at a constant potential V0. So this is the cross section and this problem is extending to infinite direction and negative infinite direction on the Z. So we're saying that Z, this is the cross section and it is extended like infinitely out of the screen and infinitely into the screen. So in the Z direction, we have like very long extension or infinite extension and we need to solve this problem so all we don't have uh, charge distribution at all all what we have is some boundary conditions the boundary conditions that we have like v not constant potential on this plane zero potential on these two planes so all the previous methods that we have can't be used to solve this problem. So that's a, a new type of problem that requires a new type of solution, which is the boundary value problem. So let us learn how to apply the boundary value problem on this problem. Okay, so here we start by writing the equation v of x, y, z because we have infinite extension in the z direction we can't have any dependence on z so the dependence will be just on x and y so this is the function the electric potential function everywhere in this problem it would be like a separation of variables for x and y this is the first boundary condition independence of z second boundary condition is that v of zero and y so v of zero which is this one sorry v of zero is x equal zero and y so this one equal constant v naught the v at infinity equal zero at infinity we always must have zero v of x and zero so this plane here we have ground so it's zero v of x and b this half plane here also is grounded so it's equal zero so we have five boundary conditions and we need to solve for capital z capital x capital y those are the three functions and their multiplication is the value of uh, v because we have no dependence on z the solution kz must equal zero and z will equal a constant so here if z equals zero this will be the equation no dependence on z so we'll just have a constant so the solution z will equal a constant then we have like the sum of the square of those constant terms equals zero we're going to assume that kx is imaginary and ky is real you might choose the different you might choose the opposite to assume ky to be imaginary and kx to be real and if you assume this way and try to solve the problem you will not find the solution and you will return back and make the opposite assumption which is so we just start with the right assumption from the beginning so we're going to say kx is imaginary and ky is real so we have kx equal j k and ky equal k so now from this side one of them is negative to the other so one of them will be real one of them will be imaginary but the magnitude is the same so the magnitude we choose to equal k the kx is imaginary the ky is real so this is coming from this uh, condition now let us see if kx is imaginary it's sine h and cosine h or this format when k square is positive it would be sine or cosine so let us see the boundary conditions and apply the solution so boundary condition number three is at infinity x infinity we have zero so at x 
so for x let me bring the table here again so i'm just brought the table of the possible solutions here to make it easier for us for kx which is imaginary we have this solution the boundary condition for x equal infinity is we having like zero value so like this term here when x goes to infinity this term will be infinity so this term can't be a solution so it must be not chosen or we choose like uh, c2 to equal zero and the solution would be d2 multiplied by e to the minus kx why because the solution here is e to the minus kx when x goes to infinity we will have when x equal infinity this will equal zero which meet or fits this boundary condition so this is like the solution for x will be a constant multiplied by e to the minus k multiplied by x okay the fourth condition v of x and zero equal zero so when y equals zero we must so for y solution which is real it would be like here and the value that we have for uh, y equals zero we can use either this format or that format this is easier the sine and cosine is easier so when y equals zero sine ky will equal zero but cosine ky will equal one so this term would exist which doesn't like fulfill the boundary condition so we just let me do this we can take this term we can take this term because they contradict with the boundary conditions the first one contradict with the boundary condition at infinity this one contradict with the boundary condition at y equals zero so the solution for uh, the y would be a constant multiplied by sine ky so now the solution for v of x and y and z but there is no dependency on z is a constant multiplied by e to the minus kx sine ky okay so this is the format of the possible solutions and we now need to find the value for k and the constant c okay so the fifth boundary condition is that v of uh, x and y equal b also equal zero so for this solution to equal zero we need k to equal any integer by divided by b and this integer can be one two three four so on so forth okay so now we have like multiple possible values for k each one can represent a solution and as i said earlier the general solution is the linear combination of all possible solutions so the solution is the integration or sorry the summation of all possible uh, solutions linear combination means they are weighted so like a constant multiplied by this uh, exponential function multiplied by this sine function we notice here that we are starting from n equal one because when n equals zero this will be sine zero which equals zero so the solution is zero which is called trivial solution okay negative value of n also are excluded why because here no problem to use positive or, or negative values for n the only difference would be like negative sign but each solution is multiplied by a constant so we can just like take the positive side and that would be enough also if n is negative this one will be positive and if we go at infinity the solution will not vanish and this violate the 
boundary condition at infinity potential equal zero so we just have positive values for n for this so now the general solution for this problem does have this format it's a linear combination of all those possible solutions now we have one boundary condition that we must uh, use to find the value of this cn so when c1 equal how much c2 equal how much so on so forth so the boundary condition is that at v x equals zero and any value of y we have v naught so the solution of v of zero and y equal v naught we just substitute x equals zero so this term will be unity and we have this solution constant multiplied by sine by y divided by b equal zero for any value of y so we need to find the value of cn and there is like a, a sort of like a common method to do this we multiply both sides by this sine function sine m by over b y where m is another integer and right side so we, we did nothing we just multiply both sides by the same value and you integrate both sides from 0 to b so this is sort of like a, a traditional mathematical method to solve this kind of problems so here on the right hand side if m is uh, even so the integration sine will be cosine if this is even cosine to whatever like an even number of by at b y equal b so it will be cosine 2 by or like 2 n by 2 x by whatever uh, equal 1 and cosine 0 equal 1 so 1 minus 1 will give us 0 so if m is even this will equal 0 if m is odd value we will find that the right hand side will equal this format now going to the left hand side sine sine it can be like written as cosine the difference minus cosine the sum and integrating those two sides if m doesn't equal n and we are integrating over one full uh, cycle or like sorry it's a, a half cycle from zero to b and this is cosine function it will always give us zero unless n equal m so this equal constant equal one and we, the integration would give us b so for the left hand side if m doesn't equal n we have zero if m equal n the left hand side equal this value so the solution for cn so the solution for cn would equal this value if n is odd equal zero if n is even now we can just equate the two sides we'll find the value for cn equal for v naught n by and vx would have this solution where n is always positive odd number and this is valid in the region of the solution once we have this expression we can find the expression for e which is minus the gradient of v so i would like you to go through the steps learn how to apply the boundary condition and uh, moving with the steps till you reach the final point let us now go to another uh, example where we have like this problem setup where we have like those three sides with zero potential and the left side with v zero potential same as previous example we have infinite extension in the z direction so we would expect the solution to be independent of z so let us start by putting down the boundary conditions no dependency on z so the solution would be a function of x multiplied by a function of y the potential at x equals zero 
at any y equal v naught v of x equal a at any y equal zero so this is new v of x and zero equal zero v of x and v equal zero so for the three sides top bottom uh, top bottom and right side we have zeros on the left side we have uh, v naught so the same as before for kz equals zero so the solution for z is just a constant and we have like similar condition here as be before kx squared plus ky squared equals zero so the magnitude of k equals the kx equals the magnitude of ky equal k we'll assume that ky is real kx is uh, imaginary okay so now let us look for the possible solutions for the y side it's y is real so it's sine plus cosine but we have zero at y equals zero and y equal b so the cosine is not suitable we must have just a solution as sine kx so this is the solution for y for x now we have nothing to say like as before we might have this uh, solution or that solution we're going to use sine h cosine h we can also of course use this one but we're going to choose the sine and cosine so we have like the boundary condition when x equal a we have zero so we just write the equation for the boundary condition and the x must equal x capital must equal zero at x equal a so we got this relation here between the two constants so the x solution does have this expression we can do like many different things but anyway so the math we can just use this format or that format or we can simplify it like to have like this expression so this would be the solution for x uh, capital so now the total solution would be the y capital multiplied by the x capital multiplied by a constant and this is the total solution or the, the general solution we have just one boundary condition left which is the uh, vx equal vx and b equal zero so we have kb equal uh, n by so we have two sorry two boundary conditions not used yet the first one was like the top plate similar as before so the expression here does have this format and uh, the total solution would be like this solution here the other condition is at x equals zero so our solution equal v naught doing the same thing multiply both sides by both sides by sine m by over b y the right hand side would give us this expression if m is odd zero of m is even as before the left hand side so this is so note that we are applying when x uh, equals zero so the remaining would be sine h with the variable a because x equals zero y is the variable and we are multiplying with sine m by over by integrating from 0 to b same as before uh, for m equal n would have uh, a value for m not equal n it will give us a zero 
so equating <coughs> this side with uh, this is the left side with the right hand side we'll get this expression and just substituting the constant into the general expression would have like the solution here and if we want to find the electric field we just calculate the minus gradient of the electric potential function and now we have the full solution for this problem so far we like like had the theoretical analysis from cartesian coordinate system and we had solved two examples for cylindrical and spherical they are not part of the course it's just for your own uh, information you can uh, read through uh, the book or just you know they exist if you need it in the future you know how to find them so what we did today is we solved boundary value problems and learned how to uh, apply this in Cartesian coordinate system. Thanks you for watching uh, the video and meet you in the discussion session. Goodbye.